If like me, you're between your mid-20s and early 40s, then you're considered a millennial. We are now the largest generation in Australia, but we're also the most criticised, mostly by those who are older than us. They whinge, we're lazy and entitled. So what? Well, apparently it matters when it comes to working. We're causing our bosses headaches because we're so demanding. We want greater flexibility in our jobs as well as more freedom to enjoy acting our age. And if we don't get what we want, well, watch out. A stroll through the Colorado countryside is the leisurely way Gabby Judge starts her work day. I had a come to Jesus moment with myself where, you know, I was like, what, what do you want? And I was like, I want to work whenever I want. You know, I want to be able to, to do what I want. What millennial Gabby wants, millennial Gabby usually gets. And that includes making her job work for her. I have a whole program called the Lazy Girl Job Program. And so it After throwing away her corporate career, Gabby has started an online business that antagonises the very concept of regular work, dubbing herself the anti-work girl boss. She literally makes her money telling office workers how to find easier jobs from the comfort of her own home. What was that title again and what does it mean? How I really envision anti-work girl boss is finding a way for all of us to find our own success that's not necessarily centered around our nine to five and that can look like creating career portfolios entrepreneurship like whatever it is called lazy girl jobs not because we're being lazy it's an anti-hustle dig 13,000 kilometers away in sydney tradie alex fuentes who definitely isn't a millennial is halfway through what could turn into a 12-hour day. The money's good and um, I work hard to justify the, uh, the, the pay packet at the end of the week. Safe to say, Alex's work is about as far away from a lazy job as you can get. After clocking on at 6.30, his week is massive. A minimum of about 40 hours uh, can extend to 60 and I have been known to do up to 70 hours. People doing honest, hard yakka like Alex can only dream of taking on an easier, or more flexible job. Do you think that younger generations are trying to find shortcuts, I guess, a, a bit too much on, on the work front and they actually need to learn more about what a hard day's work involves? I think hard work in any industry is, is required. I don't believe in people who try and take shortcuts. If they're taking shortcuts in the industry that they're in, they're obviously in the wrong industry. Increasingly, younger generations are busy trying to redefine what work means. Don't do more. A bare minimum Monday working from home. Join me tomorrow for Don't Test Me Tuesday. With millennials now overtaking boomers as the largest working generation. You are 100% replaceable. They're sending shockwaves through the employment landscape with their demands for a better work-life balance. So are they actually onto something here? Or, like most boomers think, are millennials lazy? No. Millennials aren't lazy. Millennials are incredibly hardworking. In January this year, activist and political campaigner Sally Rugg unwittingly became the face of young Australia standing up to their boss. Do you ask your staff to work unreasonable hours? I'm oh, sorry, I'm not, I won't be commenting to that. It was the court case that had Canberra buzzing with Sally taking on both her employer, Independent MP Monique Ryan, and the Commonwealth, claiming she'd been forced to work an unreasonable amount of overtime. For Sally, regularly slaving away at 70-hour weeks in Parliament was simply unsustainable. And in the end, the case itself was also exhausting, with all parties settling out of court. This is now the first time Sally's spoken publicly about the issue. It seems to me that if the Australian Parliament can govern a nation of 25 million people, can make huge decisions about expenditure and revenue and sending us to war, then they can probably be a really safe, productive workplace for the staff who work in the building. During COVID, I guess, you found a bit of a new passion. 
Yeah, I mean, I've always been interested in gardening. In now back mind. in a regular Monday to Friday job, Sally has woken up and smelt the roses about what a working week should look like. Well, how many hours a week would you do in your current job? In my current job, I'm working uh, standard uh, hours of work each week. Um, you know, Australia was one of the first countries in the world to achieve a standard 40-hour work week, and I think that that's like a pretty good measure of um, a week's work. Do you think it's almost become too normalised that, that people just work themselves to the bone these days? Absolutely. The hours that Australians are clocking up is completely off the charts. Australia is among the burnout capitals of the world. There's about 4 million Australians who are working more than 45 hours a week, 2 million working more than 50 hours a week and a million people working more than 60 hours a week. There's a huge segment of the population working really long hours um, and it's been completely normalised to the point where it doesn't really raise an, an eyebrow. The reality really hit when Sally compared what she was gaining financially to what she was losing from her personal life. Buying a home is, for someone my age, is almost unimaginable now. And the only way it's potentially, theoretically meant to be possible is with more and more hours of work. Um, and that's not sustainable. You know what the boomers would say to you? We all had to work hard to get here, so you have to too. I really respect how hard boomers have worked all their lives too. I think for people of my generation, the promise that if you work hard, that work will pay off. That idea is becoming more and more like a myth. Do I want to work more and more overtime and lose these years with my children? Like, at what cost? If, the, if there's no benefit, like, if, if this hard work isn't actually going to pay off the way we've been promised that it would, why would we also sacrifice time with our loved ones, being there with our kids when they're young? What is the perfect work-life balance? I'm not sure there is. I think balance is a myth. New York University economics professor Scott Galloway, clearly not a millennial, thinks it's time that the idealists grew up. He believes that young people should only be at home for seven hours a day, and that's only for sleeping. The rest of the time, he says, they should be out there chasing success professionally. I think there are very few people that are successful that haven't sacrificed a decent amount of their 20s and 30s and sacrificed relationships, time with friends, physical fitness, whatever you want to call it, uh, to make a big investment in work. Have you seen a real shift in, in the attitudes of people that are heading into the workforce? Look, I don't care if you're Beyonce or Bill Gates. The one thing very successful people have in common is that they work exceptionally hard, and it comes at a trade-off. You know, I, what I would tell young people is they can have it all. They just can't have it all at once. So it's up to you. And before you start collecting dogs and kids, if you're ambitious, I would say you have to log the hours. The pandemic was a global reset for flexible work arrangements, and a lot of millennials want it to stay that way. That, combined with an ever-aging population, is seeing businesses around the world bow to demands of young employees wanting more freedom in the way they work. And right here in Australia, there is one company doing that on an extreme level. Meet the guy worth $15 billion who has a very unique way of turning up to work. Do you work from home a lot? I work from home all the time. I might come into the office about once a quarter. Every three months? Yeah, every three months, yeah. Despite the ever-growing wave of young people pushing for more flexibility at work, there are some corporates in Australia bucking the trend. Adam Schwab is the CEO and co-founder of travel company Luxury Escapes, and he believes the work from home holiday needs to come to an end. The worker bees are buzzing. They are, it's, it's good today. It's really great to feel that, uh, that atmosphere. So a big thing for you has been getting people back into the office. Why do you feel so strongly about that? We're a highly collaborative business. We're a very technology-driven business. We're a very sales-driven business. Without that collaboration between team members, it's really hard to perform well. We hate isolation. We love people working together. But in the current climate, convincing your workers to come into the office five days a week is easier said than done. So Adam and companies like his are doing everything they can to make the office a place where employees 
want to be. So is this working hard or hardly working? Uh, this is what we do most of the time. So <laughs> right. You know, having fun's the uh, most important part, we think. Ultimately for us, the business gets a, a much happier staff and staff that, that want to work for us. Free lunch and a hit of table tennis. Not a bad way to get people back on the tools. I think you want to make the office fun. And it's not a, you're not going to a theme park. It's people obviously are there primarily to work, but it doesn't have to be a terrible environment. It can be an environment that people really want to come to. According to Luxury Escape's internal research, there are some serious downsides to letting your employees work remotely. The rate of people leaving the business is double as high if you don't work from the office. So if you come into the office, you're 50% less likely to leave. 20 years ago, bosses probably didn't care too much about making their employees happy. It's, you know, here's your gratitude, it's your paycheck. Now, shut up. Yeah. These days, how important is it for someone like you to actually think, OK, I've got to make sure morale is high and I've got to make sure that my workers are being fulfilled? I think the bar's raised. I think you're right. Like in, in terms of when I was a lawyer 20 years ago, you expected to stay till 7 o'clock every night. If you needed no work, you couldn't leave before the partner or whatnot. That, that certainly changed. So there's been a lot of differences in terms of how managers and executives think about the relationship with, with talent. Companies pushing to get workers back in the office are fighting an uphill battle. The latest Bureau of Statistics figures show that nearly half of all Australian employees already work remotely to some degree and have no intention of going back to the office five days a week. Hey, good to see you. The young and savvy workforce at Australian software behemoth Atlassian, the flexible dream is already very much a reality. And that's exactly how it should be, according to Scott Farquhar, the company's co-founder and CEO. What do you think defines the work culture at Atlassian? At Atlassian, we don't take ourselves too seriously, but we really take the work seriously. And we expect people to bring all of themselves to work, not just leave part of themselves at home, but actually bring their whole selves to work. Bringing it to work, they can do that from home. Yeah, work is a uh, vocation, not a location. And so we expect people to be able to work from a uh, home, from a cafe, from an office, um, but we don't really care where they do their work. What we care about is the output that they produce. Scott quite literally practices what he preaches. And being worth $15 billion seemingly affords you a high level of freedom in the flexibility you grant, not just your workers, but yourself. Do you work from home a lot? I work from home all the time. I might come into the office about once a quarter and uh, to Every meet three people. months? Every three months, yeah. Wow. There's not many CEOs that would be able to, to work those kind of flexible hours, I don't think. Oh, I still work really hard and uh, I work with the teams who are around the world and around Australia and a lot of our staff, you know, now live remotely and uh, those people don't have a commute to and from work so they save hours a day and then they can bring their best selves to work because they can organise their work in and around all the other things that are going on in their life and so we haven't seen a productivity change. It all sounds pretty good. But Professor Scott Galloway says be careful what you wish for. He believes the work from home culture could lead to future unemployment. I think it's terrible for young people remote work. And also, there's just a basic reality, and that is if your job can be moved from Sydney to Melbourne, it can be moved to Manila and then to Mumbai. So be clear, if you want to work remotely, more power to you, and if you can find that job, great. You will make less money. On top of the potential job losses, Scott thinks that the lack of structure creates laziness and sets young people up for failure. There's a lot of places to hide at home, and I think that people really get used to the flexibility and the ability, whether it's to walk their dog or take a break on their own terms. But at the end of the day, I think they're missing out. I think they're missing out on a certain level of Responsibly, I don't know about you, I needed those guardrails. I needed to put on a tie and a suit and be at work by 9 a.m. such that I didn't go out and get drunk during the week. Great, so thank you so much for joining us today, Scott. Almost half the employees at Lassian's hired in the last year live more than two hours from a company office, which Scott says has benefited the business by opening it up to a larger talent pool. While their work from anywhere policy has helped their employees deal with the cost of living crisis. So it's just about choice, really, at your place. It's giving people the freedom to live where they want. Um, we have an employee that used to live on the lower north shore of Sydney, lives in an apartment with uh, his children, 
and was just unhappy with the amount of space that, and how the cost of Sydney housing and walked around. And once we announced the Team Anywhere uh, possibilities that you could work from anywhere, he then moved to Wollongong and lives in a four bedroom house, 10 minutes from the beach. His kids uh, in the afternoon play with the neighbourhood kids and just go running outside and he's totally transformed his life. So if your employees can coach their kids' sports team, they turn up to work happier the next day? Totally, they turn up to work happier the next day and uh, they, they want to work for us for a long time because they're enjoying their job and enjoying how that impacts on their life. Australians are now trying to work out what they want from their workplace like never before. For many millennials, like Sally Rugg, who took her fight about working hours to court, it's now their job to convince older generations that they're doing it wrong. As a general rule of thumb across the board, do, do you think Australians should be spending less time at work? It's, it's about balance. And you think our balance is off kilter at the moment? I do think our balance is off kilter. 50 years ago, people used to smack their kids and they're like, well, I got smacked, so we get smacked kind of thing. And then over time, people start to open their eyes up and go, maybe that's not the way to go. Mm. And that's kind of the reflection that people need to have now, that you, just because you've been doing it forever doesn't mean it's the right way to do things. That's right. And that's why I think young people are the most vocal in this conversation, because it's always young people who look at how things have always been done and say, I think we can do it differently. Oh, I think we've all been there. The younger generation, you know, they have like a, a different mindset. Tradie Alex Fuentes loves his job and he doesn't want to change the way he works. For Alex, putting in the hard yards is something that he says simply comes with age and responsibility. I've become a stronger and more dedicated worker in, in my older age. I'm 53 years old and I've got two children. So um, that kind of motivates me a lot more to get the work done and to commit myself to work and become dependable and reliable. And, you know, for me, I'm just trying to create a financial foothold for my children. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thank you for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes, which are on 9now.com.au and the Nine Now app.